In part A, we are asked if the magnetic field shown in the figure is increasing or decreasing. The magnetic field is indicated by the green dots, and we know that because it's symbolized by dots that that magnetic field is directed out of the page, and the figure even indicates that. So basically we can start by noting that the applied magnetic field, which we can call B applied, is directed out of the page. But not only is there an applied magnetic field, but there is what is called an induced magnetic field. And we also want to figure out the direction of the induced magnetic field. We've come over here and we've redrawn the circular loop. We've indicated the current in purple moving in a clockwise direction, since that was the direction indicated in the original figure. And what we've done is we have drawn a right hand that is grasping this circular loop. My ability to draw right hands is lacking, so I have indicated that the back of the hand is what you are looking at right now. You'll notice the four fingers are gripping the wire and sort of curling their way into the page. Maybe a little bit challenging to see that, but the four fingers are curling into the page. We have our thumb of our right hand pointing in the same direction as the current, so the thumb would be pointing in the clockwise direction as well. Again, when you set up the right hand in this manner, you can see the fingers are pointing into the page. The fingers are the direction of the induced magnetic field. So since the fingers are into the page, the induced magnetic field is also into the page. And we symbolize that typically with these X's. So we're just going to put a few X's on the interior of the loop. And we're going to come down here and remind ourselves that the induced magnetic field is into the page. Now the fact that the induced magnetic field is into the page and the applied one is out of the page is going to give us a clue as to whether the magnetic field is increasing or decreasing. Remember, this magnetic field is the applied magnetic field. Now, Lenz's law is going to help us at this point. It states that the current from the induced EMF, which was that purple current drawn above, creates a magnetic field, which is the induced field indicated by the crosses, with a flux opposing the change in magnetic flux through the circuit. So basically what this means is the following. The induced field, again, was into the page, and therefore, According to Lenz's law, the applied magnetic field, which is pointing out of the page, must be increasing. We know this because the increasing magnetic field that's pointing out of the page would be opposed by the magnetic field that's pointing into the page, the induced magnetic field. So let's state this one more time. So as stated, the applied magnetic field, which is pointing out of the page, must be increasing because the induced magnetic field, which always opposes the change in magnetic field, is directed into the page. So we know that the correct answer for part A is that the applied magnetic field must be increasing. It's increasing out of the page, which again induces a magnetic field going into the page in order to oppose that increasing magnetic field. It's probably something you'd want to listen to a couple times, so feel free to rewind the video and listen to that one again. But in the meantime, we do have a part B. We have to find the rate at which the field is changing. So let's take a look at that. So for part B, we actually have to turn to Faraday's law of induction, which states that the instantaneous EMF, which is symbolized by this value right here, that is induced in a circuit is equal to the negative of the rate of change of magnetic flux. We also have this n right here, which is the number of loops. This question did not indicate that there was anything more than just one circular loop, so it's worth noting that n is equal to 1. Now, basically, we're trying to solve for this value, although we will see that it's actually not the change in flux that we want, but we want the change in the field. So more on that in a moment. But in order to proceed, we're going to actually need to figure out the induced EMF. So we also know that the induced EMF, which is measured in volts, is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. 
And we were given both of those values. We have the current stated here and the resistance here. So why don't we actually first calculate the induced EMF and then we'll use that to our advantage later. We'll take the current which is 2.5 milliamps. We don't want milliamps, we want amps. So just make sure you multiply your current by 10 to the minus three. That will convert it into amps and then multiply that by the resistance which is 0.5 ohms. And so you can pick up your calculator and multiply these two numbers together. And when you do so, you're going to get 0 0.00125. And again, this comes out in volts. So keep this value in mind. We're going to be needing it momentarily. Now, let's talk about the magnetic flux. We recall that magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic field strength times the area of the loop times the cosine of an angle. Now we do know that the field is changing. That is implied by the question. The area of the loop is certainly not changing and we know that because the radius is remain uh, remains a constant throughout the problem. So the radius is a constant. This angle will also be a constant as well. We recall that the angle would be an angle between the magnetic field, which can be symbolized by these green lines here, and then a line that passes through the center of the loop known as the normal line. So there's always this normal line that passes through the center of the loop. But since these lines are parallel throughout the problem, the angle will just be zero. So the angle is a constant. The only quantity that's changing, again, is the magnetic field, B. So what we're saying is that the change in magnetic flux can be written in the following matter. We know that the change in any quantity is the final value of that quantity minus the initial value of that quantity. So we're going to do the final magnetic flux minus the initial magnetic flux. And we can then substitute in the BA cos theta. So we would have B final times the area times the cosine of theta minus b initial times the area times the cosine of theta. Notice again the area and the angle isn't changing so that's why we didn't alter the symbols but the magnetic field is. And so we can actually factor out a common factor here. We have a cos theta and a cos theta so why don't we take that out and then we would be left with the final magnetic field minus the initial magnetic field. So this would be our expression for the change in magnetic flux. So keeping that in mind, we go back to Faraday's law and we're gonna recopy this equation. Since n is equal to one, we can omit that value right there. So we're gonna have the induced EMF is equal to negative change in magnetic flux divided by change in time. Now we just created an expression for the change in magnetic flux. It is this expression right here. So we're going to substitute that in for this change in magnetic flux here. So we could rewrite the equation as follows. We're gonna have that A cos theta times the BF minus BI. And this is all divided by delta T. Now, let's keep in mind what the question asks. It wanted the change or the rate at which the field is changing. That would be symbolized by change in B over change in T. That's actually what the question is asking us for. Well, we have that, it's right here actually. Notice that this expression in the numerator is the change in the magnetic field, and then in the denominator we have the change in time. So in fact, why don't we rewrite this equation again, and we'll have negative A cos theta multiplied by the change in B over the change in T. We can finish solving for our expected quantity, this, by dividing both sides by negative A cos theta. These cancel out here, and we have our expression. As follows. 
So we're basically almost there. We recall that the loop was a circular loop, so we're gonna actually take the area, A, and rewrite that in terms of the area of a circle. So it would be pi times radius squared cos theta. And then we have the change in magnetic field over the change in time. We're basically ready to finally plug in the known values. But one final little modification to recognize is this minus sign. We are actually going to drop this minus sign. The minus sign was there just to remind us that the induced magnetic field will always oppose the change in the applied magnetic field. They're always opposing one another as stated earlier. That's the purpose of that negative sign, but if we leave it in there, it's gonna cause our final answer to be negative. But remember, we determined that the change in magnetic field was a positive quantity because we said earlier that it was increasing. So that means that delta B over delta T should be a positive quantity. So we're going to omit that negative sign and finally plug in the known values. The induced EMF we determined earlier, that was 0 0.00125 volts divided by pi. The radius was given as eight centimeters but we want that in meters, so just make sure you multiply this by 10 to the minus two, that converts the radius into meters, and then square it. We noted earlier that theta was zero. That was the angle between the normal and the magnetic field. The cosine of zero is one, so really you're just multiplying this by one down here. We can finally punch all these values in, and when we do so, we get 0.0622. You look at the units here, you have the numerator is magnetic field, so that would be Tesla, and then the denominator is time, so that's seconds. So you end up with Teslas per second as your answer for the change in field over the change in time. Your homework system might want this in millitesla. So let's do one final conversion. We know that one millitesla is 10 to the minus three Tesla. So you basically take your answer and multiply by one over 10 to the negative three, and you end up with 62.2, and it will be now millitesla per second because the Teslas cancel. So this would be the final answer to part B.